grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the kindness and the power and the strength of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the direction and guidance of the Spirit be with us. I'd like to ask you a personal question as far as what difference does the Reformation make to you? But I'd like to add to that what happened as far as Martin Luther's life and the direction that he was taken, the, the difficulty and the strife that he had, what, how might that connect with what you are facing right now? Or what you have faced in the past, or what perhaps a loved one is now facing. And the reason I ask that is that the Reformation is important to us because of what happened. That's true. But the Reformation is also important to us because of us now, and what is in front of us, and how we handle the challenge of life or the challenges of life, which in so many ways perhaps are diminished from what Luther had, but yet they're the same. And the answer is also the same. Luther had the understanding by the time that he grew up or, or became uh, exasperated, frustrated with what was happening as far as the church, Luther said something has to change. And so he wrote the, the 95 Theses, and it was October 31st, 1517. He wrote those, and there's some debate whether or not he actually put them on the church on the church door, but I tend to think that he did. He, we definitely know that he sent them on to his, uh, his overseers in a proper way, proper church way, as far as letting them know this is what he thought needed to be discussed. And so when he went to that church door, as we have discussed, and put those 95 theses on that door, I'd like to hammer as the word of God and those nails as the grace of God and the door itself, as the children's message also showed us, as the opportunity or the opening to Christ, by faith, to the glory of God. Now, when we look at what our challenges might be right now, what do we have? What assets do we have? What things, what understanding? What do we know? You see, everybody has this challenge, and I think you definitely would agree with me, is that what is the purpose of life? Where am I headed? Where are my children headed? If that is your blessing. Where are my parents headed? What is it that I am supposed to do in this life? And what is it that I'm supposed to do in this particular thing right now that's in front of you perhaps as far as having to handle it? Perhaps it's marriage. Perhaps it's a difficult marriage. Perhaps it's a loss of a loved one. Perhaps it is a challenge in your job. And that is what I'd like you to think of as far as now, how, why has God prepared us and put us in a position where we can handle life and where, but not by what we do, certainly not by the works that we do, but by the grace of God, we have Christ. And by the grace of God, we have the strength of Christ, Christ the wisdom of Christ. How did this all happen? When we look at Luther, we know, as we have already discussed and previously, that he grew up wanting to be, especially because his father wanted him to be, to be a lawyer. And then because death sort of entered into his life, he stabbed himself with a sword. He almost lost his life through bleeding. He uh, recovered from that. A good friend of his died. And then after going home and visiting with his parents, he came back and we talked about the lightning storm. And we here in Nebraska know how powerful the, the thunderstorms can be and lightning can be. And so it was similar. And so he pleaded, he pleaded that if you save my life, I will become a priest. Now, becoming a priest at that particular time is different than our understanding as far as what that might mean. Because at that particular time, although certainly in some churches it might still be the same. At that particular time, there was a great split between you and the, the priest. Between you and me, if you like. And I know everything, and I will tell you everything, and you receive it. That was part of what he was breaking down. It's a little crass, I know. 
But that is what he was breaking down. That is what is different now as far as us living. That is what we will find out even more. That is what it means as far as the priesthood of all believers. Going to First Peter and, and understanding what, according to the scriptures, that each and every one of us can go to Christ himself. But Luther didn't know that. Luther thought that he had to, as the church was teaching him at that time, had to do it through good works. And one of the good works that he could do is become a priest. If he became a priest, he would be more holy. And therefore, he would be, more, he would be a better recipient as far as receiving God's forgiveness. But when he entered into the monastery and became a priest, the difficulty was that no matter how much he would repent and how much he went through absolution and forgiveness, there are, there are, there are stories that six hours of confession and praying often happened with Luther. Six hours! And he still felt like he was there was something missing. He could not do it. Stalpitz, who was over him, got so, so frustrated. He says, come back when you have something really important some sin that you really can ask for forgiveness for. <laughs> and Stalpitz also sent him on to study. To study at, at the university, at the University of Wittenberg, as it is pronounced. And there he became not only a student, got his doctorate, but also became a professor. And there he looked at Scripture. Looking at Scripture, then it unlocked to him the, the, the understanding that indeed through the word, by grace, we receive Christ through faith to the glory of God. And as he stood it, as he understood that, as it became real life for him, then he knew he was compelled to do something about it because the church at that time had trapped the people away, blocked them from appealing and knowing, from appealing to Christ and knowing the truth and the faith of Christ. After his study, he then could understand what it meant when we read our theme text, which is found in 1 Corinthians. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Part of trying to understand the difference at that time and the church that he, that he grew up in, the church that had people trapped, was that they had taken the people away from the book, from the Bible. And so the word was not known. In fact, many priests had, did not know. Luther had not read the whole Bible. Well, Bibles were very scarce. Very soon after his, if you call it a conversion, after his understanding that grace is for all, then later he would translate the Bible into the New Testament first and then the Old Testament into the language of the people, into German. And the German Bible is still used today. So a marvelous, gifted man, but the most important gift was his understanding that people were trapped without knowing grace. And so this is the message for us now and what, where are we at and the difficulties the challenges that we face. Because we face them. But we face them with the understanding that through the word, through the spirit through grace through Christ we can conquer. And this is indeed is what frustrated Luther so much and why he wanted why he wanted to share what he had discovered. His despair moved him to the discovery of a Christ that loved him and had died for him. As he now was a professor of the Bible, he then started reading and studying so that he could share with his students the, what the scripture said. So he started with Psalms and found that even in the Old Testament there is a faithful God, a God that has grace and that would forgive the Old Testament people, the people of God. And then he went to Galatians and Romans and Hebrews, studying them thoroughly, going back to the original languages. 
And he was to the point, he understood it, and he said, now what is happening as far as Tetzel is concerned, who's coming here because the Pope has authorized him to sell in a neighboring area indulgences? And so he said, he knew grace. People needed to know grace. And so the indulgences needed to be discussed. And this is why we have the 95 Theses. So when we look at those, I guess, I'd like you to look at with me. Why did the 95 Theses create the reaction that followed? Here's one, number 37 in this long list. Any true Christian, whether living or dead, participates in all the blessings of Christ and the church. And this is granted to him by God, even without indulgences. Letters. Grace is free. Without want of consideration, we say that the keys of the church, that is, the church, uh, the ability for the church to forgive sins, is given by the merits of Christ. That is the treasure. You see, the church had locked up the treasures, the keys, that you could only be forgiven if you went through the church. Only. And the church certainly is important, but Luther redefined what the church is. It's a church of all believers, and the head of the church is Christ. And what they were being taught was the head of the church is the papacy. And only through the papacy and the cardinals and the bishops and the priests can sin be forgiven. There's a story that I just... I was... uh, Ricky and I uh, are in confirmation class together. You can guess which one needs it the most. (laughs) That's me. Uh, Ricky and I were looking at... uh, That's supposed to be a joke, Ricky. I don't know if it was or not. Uh, Ricky and I were looking at a a, a video, and in it uh, was something I'd never heard before. The Castle Church. You've heard of that, right? Castle Church is where he went and and nailed the 95 uh, theses on. In In the Castle Church, before Luther began to preach there, there were 17 or so little compartments on the side of the church. And what they were for was that there were priests there that would have mass, communion, by themselves, to build up grace that could be given away. They would constantly have mass over and over and over and over because it was a way that they thought that with, their, with creating this, this existence, their Eucharist, their understanding that Christ was being sacrificed right there, that this could be then given to the people. But the people were not participating. And so Luther knew that the indulgences as well as the practices. Now this all happened pretty quick. In a period of four years, Luther was... was um, excommunicated, and in those days being excommunicated meant that you went to hell. There's just no way. You went to hell, and besides that, he was also declared a criminal. He could be killed on sight. Nobody would be punished for his death. We then had the Diet of Worms, which was a, a jury uh, of, of the church people of uh, uh, witnessing what he had to say. He had the opportunity then, as the, his books were laid on the table, are these your books? He had the opportunity to then say that they are, and the heresies that they claimed, if he would say they are heresies, he would be forgiven. The excommunication would go away. And he said, no. No to that. These are my books. And what I believe, unless I'm shown by Scripture alone, I cannot in good conscience deny And so the challenge for him, Luther, is different than the challenge for us. But the challenge for us remains in Christ. The challenge for us remains possible. The challenge for us is life because of the gift of the gospel of God. And the gospel of God is this simple. God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son to die for us. So Luther continued... After the Diet of Worms, he, went to, he was kidnapped and was able to, by, by people that loved him and cared for him, he was able to then start translating, and the church changed dramatically. Uh, they were, because of the situation of, as far as 
uh, as far as the powers that be. Uh, there was an opportunity for them to have peace in their own little German states. And then for 10 years they did, or 10 or more, they did have faith. One of the things that I, they did have faith and they did have opportunities to share. One of the things that I said already is that, Christ, that he changed the definition of the church and the definition of Christ. The question is this, how was the church and Christ redefined by Luther's search of the scriptures? Now, isn't it interesting? Why, what, was, what was the catalyst? What drove him to do that? A love to know, a, a need to know that he was loved by God. And that is our catalyst. But also, it, what drives us is it drove him to grace alone, through faith, through Christ. Paul writes this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for it is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's Christ. I wonder if sometimes... We need a break. We need something to change our perspective, to jolt us, to move us out of perhaps our comfort, which we need, our comfort, our comfortness in our life. Having a set schedule, knowing what's ahead, knowing what we depend upon. Whether we need a jolt or not, we will get a jolt. Some of us got it this week or the past week. We will always get opportunities, but also difficulties, which demand we go back through the basics as far as what it is that God wants us to do and what it is that makes life sense. And this is what Luther found after his struggle, that it wasn't what he could do, but rather what was given to him. And share it he did. And by the glory of God, we still bask in what he shared. I mentioned before the priesthood of all believers. We'll be talking more about this uh, in the future, but the priesthood of all believers was a, 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 it's scriptural, it's in the Bible, but it was foreign to anybody's understanding at that time. The priesthood of, believers, the priesthood of all believers is also another way of saying God wants you and him to be on a personal basis. On a personal basis. God wants you to be able to sing the praise songs or the old hymns and to hear the glory of God being, share, being, being shown and, 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 and sung. And through that, we hear that Christ loves us. And if Christ loves us, what can we not handle? We can handle it. Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. There is a passage that I want to share with you that talks about Christ crucified and Christ being the power of God and the wisdom of God. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Only, we can only come to that conclusion because the Spirit brings the Word to us and the Spirit works in our heart. And and faith is given to us. And faith is given to us so that we understand grace. Because when you look at it, can you really believe that a man would come onto this God himself, would turn into man and come onto this world and die? Yes, we can believe. And we know that the apostles saw this man, this carpenter, who came and who spoke and who talked and who shared, and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's true. It's true. And Martin Luther knew that it was true, and Martin Luther knew that things had to be changed, and so we say, thank you, God, for the blessing that you gave us through him. He had his faults. He had his difficulties. He even wrote things later in his life which we can criticize him for. But he also knew Christ. He knew Christ. 
The importance of baptism versus works. You see, Luther was trying to make sure that he was going to go to heaven because of the works that he did. So when you take the works away, what do you leave? And one of the things that you leave is the word, and you leave the sacraments. That's what you leave. And Luther often said, if I have any doubt as far as me, my ability, my belief in Christ, my ability to, to, to take on the challenges that I have, I think of my baptism and I know that I am a child of God. We look at the passage that says this. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. We too might walk in newness of life. So 500 years ago, on October 31st, he posted the 95 Theses. But it was more than that. It was his love for Christ. It was his ability to piece through the fabrication that had been put forth, the, the counterfeit that had been given. And I ask you to do the same thing to the counterfeit that is out there in front of you. That urges you, or maybe seduces you, or seduces us, to pull away from that genuine truth that God loves us, cares for us, and His Son died for us. And through the Spirit, we now have the good works that He's prepared for us to do. The song says it this way. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. In all I do, I honor you. The grace and peace of our Lord and Savior strengthen you, keep you strong. In his holy name, Christ, our Lord and King. Amen.